All right. Greetings. Uh, today we're going to be talking about bits. Lots of bit. A little bit about bits. Bit, bit, bits. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, number bases. Um, so we're all familiar with decimal systems, and we'll, we'll go through that again. Um, and hopefully we're, we're, we've, we recall from either CS1 uh, or from last week's lecture from Jeff, uh, binary and hex. Um, and then we're going to go over a uh, binary addition um, that we, we also cover in uh, CS1. And then uh, we're going to review our conditional ands and conditional ors. And then we're going to do some uh, bitwise and in, anding and oring. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the plan for today. Um, yeah. So everything's good in Jeffland. Uh, I'm, I'm able to SSH in and, and look at his website. Uh, hopefully uh, you've, you've pretty much done assignment five and you've started assignment six. Um, and then if anyone was, was on that had any requests, they could make those. All right. Okay, so let's talk about number bases. So hopefully we're all familiar with, with the decimal system or base 10. Uh, this is this is what we use uh, pretty much every day, uh, where we express in the first position of the number everything from zero to nine, and when we exhaust that, we have to essentially make the zero and carry the one. So, like if I added one to this nine, then I I turn this to zero and then I carry the one over. Um, and so binary, uh, so yeah, so so base ten you can express 10 different values per a digit, right? Zero through nine is 10 distinct things. Um, and that when we, when we run out of values to express, we make it zero and then we carry a one over. So in, in, um, so let's, let's extend that to base 16, where we can express 16 things in one spot. So we can go from zero and we keep going all the way to F. And then right after F, we would have one zero. And that would be the equivalent. So, so, so one zero would be 16 in base 10. Make it a pointer. Um, okay, so yeah, so that's base 16 where we can express 16 things in one spot. And, and I'll talk about why it's significant later. And then base two, we can only express two things. Um, you can't see me gesturing. I'm just realizing that. Um, you can express two values uh, in one spot. And the moment we have, we have a one here, we're out of values that we can express in this spot. So we add, when we go to add one, we make the zero and we carry the one over. It's the same operation that we did for base 10, except when we carry it over, it just happens faster because we maximize, we, we, max, we maximize the value that we can have in a, a, a particular spot fairly quickly, right? Like here in, in decimal, we're still in one digit, right? We're still at nine, but in base two in binary, we need four, we need four digits to express the number nine. And also the same is true for eight. Eight, we also need four things. We need four, four digits. So, one of the nifty things is that 16 uh, is a value of a power of two and that that relation of, of, of four, um, the four bits and so yeah, it's, it's four, four, to, four, two. So the idea being is that Sorry if I lost some of you. The, the overall idea being is that the maximum value, the minimum and maximum value that I can express with four bits, so zero, 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 and one, 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 can be expressed with a single digit in base 16. So if I needed to express eight binary digits, or eight bits, I would only need two hex bits. So it, the idea being is that it's much easier for us to look at hex to be able to express lots and lots of values. 
So hex is considered just easier for our eyes in general. You see hex uh, for a lot of things. Um, you see them with hex dumps when we're looking at binaries. You see them a lot with websites when you're designing colors. Uh, and Jeff and Jeff talked uh, last week quite a lot about different uh, different uses for X. But those those are probably the two primary uses that I that I see a lot. Um, but overall, it's just easier for our eyes. Um, and computers, uh, classical computers, pretty much all run in this space too, um, for not only storing information. Um, you know, storing the stuff to your hard drive or to a CD drive or whatever, um, but also for transmitting um, what's over the air or over a wire is also all ones and zeros. Um, in Russia during the Cold War, they built a computer that was a trinary computer. It, it had negative one, zero, and one. Um, but it was so weird and convoluted that no one could figure out how to make it work as a trinary computer. Um, yeah, so, so pretty much all classical computers today use base two. Uh, quantum computers are a whole nother ball of wax. Um, and I'm happy to talk about them if anyone wants me to. Okay, so let's do some addition. Um, and so this is pretty much what it looks like, right? Um, if, if we recall from CS1, um, that if if I put if I for example stick um, this no, this this value here, and I want to convert this binary thing to decimal so that I, I understand, the, this is these are just notes. Essentially, each position is a power of two is one more power of two. So the first the first spot here is two to the zero. Um, so this here. If it's a, if it's a zero, then nothing happens. But if it's a one, then it's essentially two to the zero, which I also wrote below what all of these evaluate to. So this spot can essentially express any anything can express a zero or a one. This value here can express a zero or a two. This value here can express a zero or a four. This value is zero and eight this value a 0 and a 16. So the idea being for, for addition, or actually right now, we're just going to figure out what is this, the next activity we'll do binary addition. Right now, all we're doing is, is converting a binary number to decimal so that we can understand, so we can look at the binary numbers and understand what they are. So in this case, we're just adding, and uh, we're just adding these bits up. So for this number, it's just 16 plus 4, which is 20. How about this one? Oops. What happened there? One second. My slide has something, something hunky going on. But, um, hmm. Okay, well, whatever. Um, so, so then let's just, let's just do these, these various ones here. So if we have zero, 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 one, zero, then we only care about this one particular spot. This spot is, is so zero, one, right? This is two to zero, two to the one. So then that means that this is just, this whole thing is two in, in decimal. Here, this one, so we already know that it's the two, and then we have this one, and this is two zero, so which is just one, so this is three. How about this guy? So this is the fourth, so this is, so zero, one, two, three, so it's two to the three, which is, which is eight, right? This, this value is either zero or one, zero or two, zero or four, zero or eight. So this, this whole thing is eight. And then, so this is the same, except it's got this one more bit. So we start with eight, and then this is two to the two, so that's four. So 
8 plus 4 is 12. What about this one? This one should be easy. It's the first spot to the 0, which is just 1. So this whole thing is 1. This guy, just, just increment to 1, you know, incremented. Two more from here, or one more from here. So this is 2, 2 to the 1. This guy. So we have this spot, right? So it's 2 to the 3. Let me turn back on the pointer. Right, 2 to the 3, which is 8. So we have our 8. Then we have our 1. So 8 plus 1 is 9. And then this is just one more than that. So this is 10. Right, we see it's one more because if I was to add 1 to this thing, that would exhaust this, carry the 1 over, make the 0. So if this was 9, then this must be 10. So that's one of the, the nifty tricks with binary is that a lot of times when things are just off by one, you can pretty quickly look at them and know what they are without having to actually add them all up, is that you can use how they relate to each other that, oh, the, there's a bit there's a bit flipped or, or this is zero and it was a one. And then all you do is you, you take the original thing that it was and then subtract it to figure out what it was. Okay, so hopefully uh, now you all recall how de how uh, how binary works. So now let's do addition of, of binary numbers. So we could convert them to decimal, just like we did in the previous activity, um, and then add them, and then come up with that decimal in binary. That's one thing that you could do. Um, but in a lot of cases, uh, it's easier just to keep it as uh, binary. But let's 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 do what, what the the question's asking, right? And then we'll look we'll look at the difference. So input the result. Uh, look at the input and the result in decimal. So here this is two, and this is two. So two plus two is hopefully four. I mean, never since the accident. Um, but let's let's look at this example here. Because I didn't write this one down because this was for an activity for you guys to do, but no one's here right now. So okay, so we're gonna add so we, we just just like normal edition <clears throat> back in elementary school where we did things one at a time, we're gonna look at this place. So <clears throat> Zero plus one in this spot is going to be one. Then the next one is one and one. That's going to be two in this spot. <clears throat> but we can only express one. So what's going to happen is that this is zero, and then we carry the one over. And then this is going to be the one carried over, one and zero which is, again, we can't express a 2, so it's going to be 0, carry the 1, and then here it's going to be the carried 1, 0, 0. Actually, can I show you? There we go. Um, uh, the carried 1 and 0, 0, so that's going to be 1, and then 1, 0 is 1. So there we go. So we come we, we come up with this one one zero zero one, which if I take this this upper representation and only show you the bits that are turned on, right? Th this is all we're doing. So this binary addition, if we needed to express, it would be this in this in binary right here. But if we need to express it as decimal, we would just sort of write it out like this and then add it up. We needed to, um, and you know, can always use a calculator for if, if we're not sure. So plus eight plus one, so twenty five, and we can and we can make sure that that's correct. So we could say, well, we have sixteen plus four plus two plus two plus one. 
25. So that's what this, that's what, what I did was this here was just me adding up these individual bits and we should get the same exact result. And we did, so we're okay. Um, yeah, so on your own time, um, if you're watching this recording, uh, you can do these and then you could say, yeah, activity V2, uh, one, two, three, and four, I got these answers. Uh, and you can, and you can send that to me, um, uh, via email or whatever, and I can tell you whether or not it's correct or not, or you can, um, you, you can look it up too. Um, all right. Cool. So that's, that's, uh, that's binary addition. All right. Um, yeah. So you notice how I'm sort of prefixing a lot of things. How I'm how I'm saying this thing in decimal and this thing in binary because they're different, right? Um, you know, the the joke is that um, there are only ten people who under who who know binary. Those who do and those who don't. Because in binary, the num you know if I say binary one zero, um, then that's the number two. So it's really important that when people are just throwing numbers uh, out there or even letters out there that you know uh, what number base they're talking about. Just because they have numbers and letters doesn't necessarily mean that they're working in hex in base 16. It's a fairly good indicator, but there's other number bases that um, that, that do the same thing, that include those letters. Um, so, for example, if you were to go to 17, right, it would also include the same things that you would see in base 16. Uh, you're probably not going to see base 17, but you might. Um, but you, what you will probably see uh, a lot um, in, the, in, in the coming years is base 64, which includes lots of other weird, strange characters. Um, you know, slashes and, and, and things like that. Um, but you, just because you see numbers and letters doesn't necessarily mean that you're in base, that you're in base 16 or hex. Um, but it's really important that when you're looking at a value, any value, that you understand what is the number base that, it, that it's in. So here, in this case, I prefix them with um, you know, either a B to indicate that it's binary, or I say bin to indicate it's binary, and for decimal I say dec um, for for decimal. So, uh, and then for hex, uh, you can do. Um, there's a few different ways that you can um, that you can do it. You can say O X O five or whatever, like the O. Oh, whoops. So, yeah, there's zero, zero x5. So, so you notice J shell is perfectly content with this. But for example, if I say 10, what do we recall 10 is? Uh, so this is a hex 10, right? So this would be equivalent to um, me writing like hex like this. But if we recall, in decimal that this is um, 16, right? And, and we see that that's true. So this is, an, is, is, is a notation that you see all over the place. Um, and J shell or Java uh, recognizes it and is able to interpret it. So a lot of times when you're using hex, you'll see, you'll see things written like this. Um, but in English, we write things a lot more like this. Uh, but know that this, means this, and that this is the same value as this. It's just that it's, it's expressed a little bit differently. Okie dokie. So yeah, it's really important. Um, if, if you're mixing number bases uh, and it's not clear which one's which, uh, that's going to be bad news bears. All right. So now that I've gotten your attention, um, let's talk about conditionals. If I ask you, if you come to, to my uh, my online party, um, and I ask you if you want a hot dog and a ham and a cheeseburger, and you say yes, 
and I only give you one of them, you'll be pretty pissed off, right? Because that would have been false then, because you would have said yes, and then I would have only given you one of them. So, and we have to have both to be true, that you both got a hot dog and cheeseburger uh, in order for it to be true. Verse or, or only, only needs one or the other to be true. But if, so if, if somebody asks you, do you want a hot dog or a cheeseburger? And you said yes, and they give you one of them, you would be, you would be like, oh, cool, this is great. And then if they give you both of them, you'd be like, oh, sweet, this is the best party ever, right? Um, and so that, that logic applies exactly to the conditionals that we've been using um, this whole time. That if you, in fact, got the hot dog and the cheeseburger, true, true, that true and true is going to be true. If you said, if I asked you, and do you want a hot dog and a cheeseburger, and I only gave you the cheeseburger, then that's going to be false. If I asked you, do you want the hot dog or the cheeseburger, and I only gave you the cheeseburger, you would be, you would be still pretty stoked, and that would be true. Cool. So hopefully this is, this is all review. Uh, hopefully you've been using this in, in, in your code, but it's always good as, as just a refresher. Um, because you notice how these are only dealing with individual bits at a time. That this bit, that this bit, and this bit. But what's cool is that we can do something called bitwise um, and in an oring or bitwise operations that, that include an and an oring um, where we can deal with things that are more than just a true and a false, where we can deal with, with values. So let's do that. Let's do a bitwise and. So this is, this is very important for uh, a lot of operations that uh, are happening at a hardware level. So for example, networking, um, the way that we determine whether or not a computer is actually belongs to a specific network uh, is that we use, we look at the, the IP address and we do a bitwise and to determine whether or not the, um, the network of the computer matches the network of, the, of, of, another, of another computer or another device like your router. So um, this is one of the easiest uh, operations, I would have to say, in, in, in Bitwise and, and, and actually just in all of the operators that we have, this is probably one of the easiest uh, once, once you got it. Um, because all you're doing is just, you're essentially doing that and, this and operation, but you're doing it for each individual um, uh, binary digit. And so when things are expressed in binary, should be no problem because all we're doing here is we're just saying zero and one. We know that this is false and true. We know to be false. True and true, we know to be true. True and false, we know to be false. False and false is still false. True and false is false. So literally, we anded these two values here. We did a bitwise and of these two values, and we got up. We got. We got two. Because that bit is the only bit that's the same. So here, let's let's pull up a calculator, and let's let's just look at these. So this is sixteen plus four plus two. Right, so that's that's twenty-two, right? And then actually, we don't even need a calculator. Uh, but let's let's pull up J shell. So this is twenty-two. So twenty-two bitwise and is just a single one, and then this here is three. So we got two when we did it ourselves, and J shell agrees. Notice how we can actually do this. 
Bedwise anding is, is very, very useful and very, very powerful. There's um, specific things in the processor that allow us to do things like this. And this allows us to be able to extract very specific, um, very specific bits. Because for example, say that I have some number, let's just say int um, num, and I'm gonna give it 55. If I wanna know if 55 has a, um, let's say I wanna know if it has the fourth bit set, or sorry, not the fourth bit, but the third bit, right? That's the third bit. Or let's say the fourth bit, why not? Eight. So we're gonna say eight. So that's the fourth bit. This, if this is, if this is a positive number here, then we would know that that bit is set and it's not. 55 does not have that bit set. So let's try four. So, okay, we see that. So we know that 55, that the bit, if we were to take 55 and convert it to binary, that it would have that fourth bit set. And so we can treat this as a Boolean. Oh, um, oh I guess we could just do this. If, if it's greater than zero, right? Um, that right here, this tells me if I need an expression to check if bits were set or not. Okay. So yeah, so there, there we go. That's a bitwise and. We just look at each of the spots and then we, we do the same, we do the same kind of operation where we say this and, and, and. So this is a bitwise and, very, very useful for, for networking, for determining whether or not, um, the, and, and actually when, when you, when we take an IP address, we say one, like when you hear the 192.168.1.1, all it is, is it's, um, is it's 32 bits. That, that's, that's all it is. Um, yeah, one second. All right, okay. Sorry about that. Oh, my Slack was blowing up. Had to had to address some things. Okay, so that's that's bitwise and. So bitwise orient uh, is a is 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 a very similar process, right? The same the same way that we were dealing with those those uh, hot dogs and the cheeseburgers was that we were looking at just one of these, but in this case we're going to look at all of these. So um, if I say false and true, no, sorry, false or true, then, then it's going to be true. If we say true or true, that's true. If we say true or false, we see true. If we see false or false, we see false. If we see true or false, we see true. So notice with the same input, right, between oring and anding, right, the and, we only got the number two versus the bitwise or, we got a bigger number. Let's take a look in decimal. So that's uh, 16 plus four plus two plus one. So 23. And let's, let's open up JShell and make sure that we did things correctly. So let's express this in decimal. So if I say 16 plus two, or wait, four plus two. So 22 bitwise or, and then this one here, this is just three. And there we go. We got 23 beforehand. And we got 23 here, right here. So, all right. We didn't done goof. Um, so with bitwise ors, notice that it's not the same as if we had just added the two up. If we added the two up, right, we would have had um, 
this extra 2. So we would have had 25. So bitwise ORing is very close, can be very close to addition, but any time that the bits are, are the same, we lose them. Just like in a bitwise AND, anytime, they're, anytime that they're not both true, we lose them. So they're distinct. ANDing, ORing, and addition are very different operations. You can get values that, that are the same. So for example, in JShell, let's do, um, if I say four plus two, at six. If I say four or two, I'm going to get six because, right, because the four and the two, sorry, the four versus the two, right, these bits don't stomp on each other, right? So that's why when we do the when we do the orine, we get that six. Okay. All right. So that's that's what I had today. Um, I blasted through it pretty quick. Uh, feel free to re-review -re the recordings as many times as you want, um, and to email me if you have any questions. Um, so we checked in, made sure everything was good in Jeffland. Um, talked about number bases, decimal systems, binary, and hex. Uh, we did some binary addition. Uh, we reviewed our conditional ands and ors, and then we learned how to do bitwise and in and oring. Um, yeah, let me know if you uh, have any questions about anything. Okay, that's it for today. Um, I'm gonna hop over to, to Jeff's class session, so. Uh, I'll see you on the flip side.